Hey everyone, my name is Sophie from Sophisticated Organization. Welcome back to another Sophisticated Saturday where together we work through my to-do list and get things done around the house. Today I am feeling cozy, feeling the fall vibes over here and going to make one of my husband's favorite dishes, I guess. He is obsessed with cinnamon rolls. He doesn't necessarily love when I make recipes that have a unique spin on things, I guess I'll say. So I hope he likes these because I'm making pumpkin cinnamon rolls. They sound really good to me and fits in the spirit of what I'm feeling right now with fall coming. The temperatures have finally cooled down over here. Feels like we were still getting 90 degree days and it was just never getting below 80 really. Finally, we're getting 70s and 60s. I think some 50s might be in our future, which I'm not as thrilled about, but a little bit cooler is perfect with me. I love that sweater weather. I know it's kind of a cliche, but I love being able to layer things and not be drenched in sweat every time I leave the house. So this recipe is not that complicated, at least not that complicated in terms of making a cinnamon roll. Cinnamon rolls are a little bit more time consuming. Jim did end up loving these. He did ask if cinnamon rolls were difficult to make or not. And I told him, I don't think they're difficult. They just take a while. The process itself is really not hard and they're pretty impressive. There's also three different ways that you can make this. Depending on when you want to eat your cinnamon rolls, you can make them fresh right away. After you finish making the dough and all of the rising, you can pop them right into the oven. Keep in mind, you probably need to have three or four hours before you're ready to eat your cinnamon rolls, but you could also do an overnight prep. That's really nice if you have an event in the morning or just wanna make a Saturday or Sunday breakfast or brunch special. Or the third option is that cinnamon rolls honestly freeze pretty well. I like to freeze them before they go in the oven. You can also freeze them after you fully bake them and then just warm them up. But I find that when you freeze them before you bake them, then they're extra fresh when you take them out of the freezer and bake them. All you're gonna do is just make sure that you bring it to complete room temperature after you've taken it out of the freezer to let them warm up and rise a little bit again, and then you can go ahead and bake them. So you'll see I prepped all of the dough. I am covering it with plastic wrap. Make sure you have it in somewhat of a warm place or your house is nice and warm. And while that rises, I'm going to quickly get the cinnamon sugar that's gonna go into the filling ready. It's just brown sugar and cinnamon and get some housework done while we let the dough continue to rise. Light laundry day, most Saturdays I do wash our cleaning rags, so I threw those in the wash. And then here's a little sneak peek into Owen's big boy room. You can tell it is not in good shape yet. There are no baseboards on half of the wall. You can see on the wall by the crib there. We also only have one curtain in his room. Still trying to figure out that situation out, so I'm not gonna show the whole thing right now, but picking it up a little bit. Also going in his bathroom, he had gross moldy bath toys that I'm not even gonna worry about cleaning. I'm just going to toss those. And something I should have probably done first thing in the morning is make the bed, but I wanted to get the cinnamon rolls rising. So I put it off for a little bit. Now we're back upstairs and I am going to make our bed finally. <laughs> also really wanted to do a deep clean of the floor. We were over at our friend's house the other day and they were asking if we vacuum our wood floors. And Jim was like, no, we don't vacuum our wood floors. And I was like, what do you mean we don't vacuum our wood floors? Cause Jim helps out in vacuums a lot, but I guess he mostly just does the carpet. I do sweep our wood floors a lot. So maybe that's what he was thinking of, but I do vacuum them as well. It just kind of depends on the situation. I also have what I've shared before many times, the 
Bissell Crosswave, which is a little bit of a vacuum and a mop in one. Really like using that tool, but when I wanna do a deeper clean, it's nice to have the two separate steps of picking up the debris on the floor and then cleaning the floor. And today I felt like the floor needed a good mopping. It needed a good sweeping and cleaning or vacuuming. So I'm going to vacuum it up and then we're gonna get my spin mop out, which I haven't broken out in a while. And I will share with you the whole floor cleaning process. So as I was vacuuming the floor by the kitchen table here, I was thinking how difficult it was to get around the chairs and just kind of moving them around back and forth and back and forth until I realized it would be so much easier to just put all of the chairs up. This is not a quick process that I'm doing. I'm doing a floor deep clean or a deep clean of the floors and I'm gonna be mopping here too and I really wanna make sure that I am getting all of the spaces. So a little bit delayed, but I did decide to flip all of those chairs up and get them out of the way as well as moving the armchair and then I'm going to move the rug that we have by the patio door and the shoes that were left there still warm enough that we're playing outside and things like that so there's a pair of my shoes and owen's shoes Once I finished up with the vacuuming, I got my spin mop out. This spin mop I've had since I lived in Denver in an apartment. It works great there, it works great here. It really does a nice job of deep cleaning the floors and you can always tell by how dirty that mop water gets that it's doing a good job. I'm also using the Method Squirt Mop Cleaner. This is the hardwood floor version. It has a really nice almond scent to it. I also use their I think it's just maybe like a hard surface, hard floor and tile cleaner one. That one I wanna say is eucalyptus. It's a little bit more of a fresh, bright scent. That's great for bathrooms and other floors like that. But for the wood, the Method Wood Floor Cleaner and the Almond Scent always brings a nice fresh scent and you can tell that I've mopped everything and it does a nice job of cleaning. You'll see where Owen's high chair is. That's where I have to put in some additional elbow grease because there's always food left behind there. But the mop does a nice job and every now and then I just go back to my bucket and wring it back out with some fresh water before I continue going and add the squirt mop solution every now and then as well. The cinnamon rolls were finally done rising, so I am going to flour my work surface here, cut it in half because I didn't mention that I am doubling the recipe. After explaining that there are three different timings in which you can make your cinnamon rolls, I am going to freeze some of these as well as make some of them fresh, so that's why I decided to double it. With a baby coming, it's nice to have some freezer meals, even if it doesn't make it until the baby arrives, but as I get further along in my third trimester and don't wanna be on my feet as much, but still want something fresh and homemade, it'll be nice to pull this out of the freezer and pop it into the oven whenever we 
we want some fresh cinnamon rolls. So I am just using a ruler here. I specifically have this ruler for baking and in measuring it out as I roll it, I have some softened butter that I'm then going to put all over the surface here, get it as spread out as I can. And then you're gonna add on your cinnamon sugar mixture. I just move that around with my hands and roll it as tight as possible from the long end there and wrap it all up. This should make about 12 cinnamon rolls, so measure as best you can. I probably could have used my ruler there, but I just eyeballed it. I did slice off the ends there because they are not gonna be filled as much with cinnamon sugar and they're just a lot smaller. So you can feel free to discard the scraps or like I did, I just add them into my baking dish and I'm going to bake those as well. Might as well enjoy them, right? I'm gonna get started on the second dough. I'm not gonna show you that whole process because it's the exact same thing, but you'll see there is a second rise that's needed. These cinnamon rolls puffed up so much with the second rise. So after you have them rolled and they are put into your greased baking dish, then just cover them with plastic wrap and let them rise again. I'm putting the ones that I want to freeze into these smaller containers and actually one of them puffed up so much that this container was not quite big enough for it. So again, keep that in mind with whatever cooking vessel you're using, you need to have a little bit of spare height. Into my office, I am doing just a couple of small quick tasks here. I had one label order from my website that I wanted to fill really quickly. I did a bunch of them previously for white labels and I just had one order where the person ordered black labels and I hadn't taken care of that one yet so I needed to finish that up quickly. And you'll see I have next to me my bump book. This is my pregnancy journal. I am trying my best to stay on top of it and actually doing a pretty good job. I just had couple of weeks where I fell behind. If you haven't watched my video where I explained what happened around weeks 26, 27 of being pregnant, I will link that video. But I basically was not around for a couple of weeks, so I need to catch up on things and make sure this baby journal is up to date. Hopefully by sharing the label making process, you can see that there is a little bit of work involved in this. It's not super simple or quick to make these labels, but also if you're thinking about getting a Cricut, it is something that you can do yourself as well, or you can always order labels if this looks daunting to you or overly time consuming.
the second rise is done. I have my oven preheated and popped in the cinnamon rolls that I was going to eat today or start eating today. And while those bake in the oven, I can get started on the frosting. It's a cream cheese frosting, kind of a unique one because it's cream cheese and powdered sugar, butter, and then I think a lot of the flavor really comes from maple syrup that you're gonna add into it. So I am adding my maple syrup and gonna give it a nice blend. And then I'm gonna show you how beautiful these cinnamon rolls came out of the oven. They were so big and puffy and delicious. Okay, I'm giving the cinnamon rolls just a moment to cool off before I add the icing. It said to wait about 10 minutes. 10 minutes is a perfect amount of time for me to get the dishes put away. I had the dishwasher running after all of that baking as well as just there were some dishes in there that needed to be washed anyway. I always try and multitask as much as I can. So you've probably been noticing as the dough rises, I'm gonna go run around and clean the floors. As the dough rises a second time, I'm gonna do some label orders and work on my pregnancy journal. As it cools off, I'm going to empty the dishwasher. You get the point but it makes for a much more efficient day when you plan things out that way. You don't need to be nonstop all day. And trust me, I'm not. I have a little boy, I'm pregnant. There's lots of resting going on. This is truly just a few hours that it takes when I film these videos. And it's because I'm very efficient with my time, try and get it done as quickly as possible. And that's what I'm doing today. And the second I'm done with emptying this dishwasher and refilling it again, I am going to frost those cinnamon rolls, sit down, pop my feet up, watch some TV with Jim, and enjoy. So that is it for today's Sophisticated Saturday. I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for plenty more Sophisticated Saturdays, but until next time, I will see you all later.